Good morning, it's just gone half past eight. I think I put my head down around about, oh, I don't know. It was dark, but I hadn't even been using the torch for too long, maybe 10 o'clock, something like that. And I slept through pretty well. A little bit more restless than the first night, but still pretty good, to be honest. Now, we'll talk taps just for one minute. Well, one Tony minute, could be like, like 20 seconds, or could be 10 hours, we never quite know. Um, but you can see that we've got a tap here, and I'm just gonna run my finger down, all the way down there, so it drips well away from me. And we have, you know, a high-sided tap there with gaps all the way around, you know, a massive gap there. And obviously, you know, a completely open front. And yet you can see that obviously where last year's been lying underneath there, it's just completely, let's see, go back, <laughs> go back, you silly dog. Round here, round here. Oh, that's not quite what I had in mind. Round here. All right. Oh, you're all wet. It's still there. So, yeah, you can see that uh, condensation is literally dripping off, but that could be also where Lassie has knocked the outside of it as well. So, certainly, I think it condensation just depends on the conditions as much as anything else. Because we've got a lot of condensation here. <laughs> Good morning from Lassie. Good morning from me. <laughs> that was really all I wanted to say about condensation is it doesn't really matter, you know, whether you've got a tarp or a tent, you know, if the conditions are right or, or wrong or whatever, you're going to get a lot of condensation. Um, so, you know, just have a cloth handy, you know, over yourself and just wipe the bits over yourself. So if it does drip, it's not dripping on you if at all possible. Or just don't really worry about it too much because it's not going to be that much spread out, you know, it's not that bad. But like I said, if you're getting in a tarp, then. <laughs> oh, let's see, we've got to put the kettle on. I definitely think it's a uh, cup of tea time in a minute. Oh, let's see. Oh, you are a great big lump, aren't you? <laughs> Go on, move. Go on, move. Oh, go back. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm not gonna get any peace. <laughs> oh, actually, actually, if you just stay there for half an hour or so, that's quite handy actually because there's the sun's. Right in my face there. Quite literally got the sun. In fact, if I put the GoPro there, that's a that help block. No, maybe not. <laughs> I've got the sun coming right in on us. It's quite bright too. Oh, <laughs> you can see the sun around my face. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> You're not going to complain about the sun though, are we, Lassie? Because for about six or eight months, oh, last winter and into the spring, we literally never saw. Oh, God. <laughs> We just literally never saw the sun 
Asphyxiated by a dog. <laughs> oh. Kenneth, you can't account for you <laughs> for being asphyxiated by a dog. <laughs> All right, now come on, go back. Go on, you put your dirty great paws over my bed. All right, now then, I'm gonna make a cup of tea. Go and settle down now. Go on, go and settle down, Lassie. Oh. That's right, you stay there, look at her ready for more. Oh, Lassie. Oh, Lassie, we've got a busy day ahead of us today, a busy day of doing nothing. Mind you, we'll probably try and do a bit more video today, maybe. We didn't do much yesterday, did we? <laughs> oh, Lassie. Son, I need to make a tea, let's see. For some bizarre reason, and I don't know why, I used the GoPro yesterday with the with the battery. Obviously with the battery. And when I finished it was on about 30 35 percent. So I put the power pack into it to charge it up a bit. And when I went to uh, turn it on this morning, it wouldn't turn on. So luckily I always carry a couple of spare batteries with me as well. Uh, yeah. And put a spare battery in and that, um, and that works. So I don't know what happened to the battery that was in the GoPro that had 30% plus however much time I was charging it up for with the power pack. GoPro really do need to try and sort out their efficiency or whatever the word is. And people were complaining about the the GoPro 9, saying the GoPro 9 was very rubbish and unreliable. If anything, I found the GoPro 10, which is the one I'm using here, <laughs> to be less reliable and less stable than, than the GoPro 9 I had. I mean, with a 9, I virtually never had a problem with it. I can't say it was perfect, but I didn't really have a problem with it. It was fine. I know everybody was saying, oh, the GoPro 9 didn't work. It was rubbish. Don't buy it. Mine was fine. I got more problems with this GoPro 10 than I ever did with the 9. Anyway, all right, well, I got to clear out these hairs that last year's deposited in my pot. Very lovingly. Thank you. Let's see, I really appreciate all the hairs in my cup of tea. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I'm going to blame oh, Chris for this newfound Oh, laziness of Hobsden proportions. I found it so comfy 
<laughs> uh, I thought, well, why should the peasants have a comfy chair? I mean, the master has to have a chair if the peasants have got a chair. So anyway, before I went away a week and a half ago, ow, <laughs> the, old knee, the old knees, I had to pop into London. So I said to taxi driver, do you, um, can you take me to uh, an outdoor shop? And to be honest, I wasn't sure what you'd take me to. I thought you, you know, I thought you might take me to a, you know, one of those cheap, <laughs> those cheap places. So anyway, you took me to Ellis Brigham, and they seemed pretty decent actually. So I went in there, and I grabbed a new shirt, new pair of trousers. <laughs> Been wearing the same trousers for ages. Oh, I clean them, obviously. But <laughs> I was al almost rotating. <laughs> Just a couple of pairs of trousers to get them. My stupid little fat stomach I got now, and I can't get, I can't get into my other trousers at the moment. <laughs> so I managed to get some other, <laughs> I managed to get some other trousers that that fitted my <laughs> my little pot belly. <laughs> oh, God. Ah, uh, Tony's got a pot belly, would you believe it? <laughs> uh, I never thought the day. Anyway, so I got a pair of trousers, let's say 30, 34, I think. And that uh, fitted, fitted okay. And a raincoat. I finally thought, well, I can't keep and getting soaked. It doesn't exactly look very professional <laughs> if the main starring youtuber you know keeps getting soaked so i have invested in in a new um in a new waterproof jacket as well i've gone back to gore-tex i kind of tried all the other fangled things and and ultimately, they all let me down one way or another. Well, apart from Paramo, obviously, which I'd wear in the coldest of cold winters. Um, but everything else, I still think Event is, is very good. Um, I've not had any leaking. I've not had a leak with Event yet, I must admit. But then I haven't really worn it so much as a raincoat. So Event's never let me down. But then I don't have very much event, like literally one jacket. Uh, and obviously it's in my mountain oil designs. Um, uh, bivy that makes that waterproof. So, <laughs> so we'll probably end up using that more than I do. More than I do my, my event jacket, which is barely fits me now. So anyway, yeah, so I got a pair of trousers, well actually two pairs of trousers, or was it maybe even three actually. Um, I thought, well I don't want to get too many trousers, but I want to have enough that I can sort of, you know, fit into a, into a recyclable, recycling, you know, thing of, of trousers. You know, if I were literally wearing the same two in ro rotation and one of those didn't really fit me that brilliantly. I think I got a 32 and I think I was kidding myself when I got those. Um, ahem. So they didn't fit either. So I'm back to being a 34 or a 36 and I've not been a 34 or 30 since six since I was sort of a little a little fatty when I, <laughs> when I was, when I left school, and when I left school, for some bizarre reason, I, I put a bit of weight on after school, and then I went to college, and I quite, mirac oh no, actually it wasn't, oh I can't remember now, I left school, and then, 
I can't remember if I put weights on when I left school. I couldn't have done, could I? Because I went straight to college. Now, I left school, and then after leaving school, I went to college, that's right. And then I was cycling literally to and from college three times a day, to and from, because I always went home for lunch. Even if lunch was, it was, it was an hour, I cycled home for lunch, so I'd only be home for like half an hour or something ridiculous like that. But I'd rather, I would rather have been home for half an hour than stuck in that, <clears throat> than stuck in college, you know, for an hour. Although rarely it worked out like that because usually I found that they had a free period. Um, it's about the only time that boys can have a period, <laughs> can have a free period. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, we had a free period quite often um, <laughs> at college when you were supposed to study. Um, <laughs> I didn't do very much studying in my free periods. I, uh... oh, nice. Morning. I cycled home <laughs> and did nothing. <laughs> there is rubbish at college. Probably because, that's probably because I did nothing. <laughs> I just sort of did, I just did as much as I, basically in college, I basically did as much as I didn't have to do. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, so we're in camp. We've got this nice comfy chair. Like I said, I didn't really see why the peasants could have one of these chairs and and the master of Dartmoor couldn't. And I kind of thought, wow. Yeah, so where was I? I distracted myself again? Yeah, so I was in London buying these trousers and a couple of shirts. This is a Rohan shirt. If you're looking for shirts, if you like shirts, check out Rohan. Because they make really good, I haven't bought from Rohan for a long time, but Rohan make really good shirts. I might even do a video on this shirt, maybe. Um, but they, they do really, really good shirts. I don't really rate their waterproofs very much. Um, but for casual, casual around town, it's probably fine. But their shirts are really, really good. I like their shirts. So I've got one long sleeve and one short sleeve Rohan shirt. I also got one of those um, cups. I'll show it to you later. But I've kind of gone back to my, my regular one. I didn't really like that... Sh that um, cup we'll talk about that later on so basically i was in Ellis brigham and i was looking at cups and just sort of stuff and really bought much outdoor stuff for ages when you've been doing it 10 years you kind of narrowed everything down to exactly what you need you don't really need to keep uh, buying stuff you kind of pretty much got it so basically, I was looking at the cups and things like that, and then I looked above me and I saw, <clears throat> I saw a, um, some chairs, and I thought, oh, I wonder what chairs those are. And I noticed they were the Helix, Hel Helix, Helinex, whatever they are. Um, and I didn't see the Zero chair there, so I just said to the lady, "Do you have the, the Zero chair?" And uh, she said, "Yeah, she, she, was, she was sure she did." So she went back grabbed it, brought it back to the counter and of course I had like two pairs of trousers, I had a, um, well, a few other bits, I didn't get my waterproof there, I got that in, in a different Edis Brigham actually, I got that one coming back from, from Wales, but I had a few bits in there, some trousers. I think I had two pairs of trousers in that Ellis Brigham in London. I don't know, I'm sure I had something else. Anyway, I don't know, I can't remember now. 
So I just said, oh, if I get the chair, can you give me 10% off everything? And she said, are you a member of this or are you a member of that? Or have you got this card or have you got that card? And I well, no, I haven't got any of that. So <laughs> I said, can you, I got a nice little order in and I said, oh, no fresh faced customer coming in, any chance of 10%? So plus so she took 10% off, so. So I got a little 10% discount, so I was quite happy with that. So one up to Ellis Brigham in London. I did ask the Ellis Brigham in Wales whether he would give me 10% and that was on a pair of trousers, a waterproof jacket and I bought a couple of other things in there as well that I needed, a wind shirt, it was about 400 quid's worth and I said could I have, to, could you know, any chance you could do 10% of a miserable mother, yeah I didn't get 10% there, so I thought that was a bit tight, it was, it was a good order I, I reckon, I know they don't have to give, you know, the price is what the price is, isn't that? But if you've got a card this, or you've got a card that, or you're a member of this, or you're a member of that, you know, why should you get a 10% off, and then someone else just comes in who's a regular customer, customer, you know, got a 400 quid order on the table there, and you can't even give, can't even give 10% off. Anyway, it's the price is what the price is. That's just me complaining. You know? But I must admit, Ellis Brigham did. It looks a decent store. I must get back around Cheddar again sometimes and go and, go and see the gorge outdoors. I'm going to go and see my friend Dave. If ever, you, if ever you go in and see Dave in the gorge outdoors, he's probably the only bloke who's in there. He's probably fossilized by he's probably fossilized by now <laughs> go in and go in and tell him tony says hi, hi. <laughs> i'll get in there sometime i just think it's just not so easy at the moment anyway we'll we'll get that way maybe oh if i do miss going in and seeing dave Oh, he was a good laugh. But I get him before he's uh, <laughs> before he kills over. Right. Well, we've just had a cup of tea. The sun is shining. As far as I can tell from the forecast, it's supposed to be a good sunny day today. So we're just going to chill out. We've got a couple of videos that we might do. We're not really going to do a, a huge amount today. This is going to be a very relaxing, laid back um, trip today. And we'll kind of see, see where today takes us, really. We're not moving. This is definitely one of those camps where I'm staying put. That's why I brought this. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Uh, I think I'm going to be, I think I'm going <laughs> to, I think, <laughs> I think I ought to turn it, oh this, is, oh, this is very relaxing, yeah, I could get used to this, I think I'm going to turn into the new, the new compo, the new compo, the new compo of, um, of YouTube or something like that, the new compo, <laughs> oh. Anyway, I'm going to chill out here. I think it's time to put some porridge on. We had a load of cows came up through here um, about 8 o'clock, between 8 and 9. They kind of wandered up here, around here, did a cow pat over there and a cow pat not far behind me there. And then they sort of just wandered off up that way. Thankfully, Lassie now just leaves them, you know, very well alone. She doesn't uh, bother them. I think she's figured out that they're not worth um, doing it. They're too unpredictable. So I don't let her... I mean, I've never, never let her chase cows, but she has in the past, especially walking through them, been... A bit difficult with, with cows and she has barked a few times and scattered them a little bit 
but I must admit, she has got, she's a lot better now. She'll actually walk around them now and she won't back at them when we're walking. And in camp, she'll stay under shelter with me. She might as well do a low level. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about you. We're talking about you. Um, she might do a low level grumble, but then I'll, um, I just say, get me and move back. And yeah, me, she's pretty good, good actually now. Bess was, Bess was a funny one with cows. She was petrified of them. And she'd like literally run a mile from them. And I found with Bess what I had to do. I don't really remember what it was like around here if cows were around. I can't really remember that too long ago now but what I remember when I was walking with Bess particularly by myself I can't really remember what it was like with Sue now it is too long ago but certainly with my, you know when I was walking by myself with, with Bess I, had to, I kept her on the lead and then just kept her by my side and if the cows got too inquisitive then it was kind of interesting you know keeping Bess next to me, but she was pretty good on the lead. She didn't really pull on the lead. Lassie is a bit of a devil. Lassie pulls on the lead. Lassie's good. I trained her pretty well, but the only thing that I was never really able to train Lassie on, I don't really quite know why I didn't get that right, because every other dog I've ever had, I've always got them to walk to heel. Maybe on a lead, but even even off a lead, I've always been able to get them to walk to heel. I'm a pretty good dog trainer. I mean, I'm not professional, but I'm I'm pretty reasonable. But Lassie, for some reason, I've I can't get her to walk to heel. <laughs> I can't. I've never been able to to get her to walk to heel properly for you know for a consistent length of time. Anyway, I suppose if you've got a dog and you've got one failing and it's and then it just pulls a bit on the lead, then you're not really doing too badly, are you? Anyway, so she's pretty good every other way. Where was I? Cows. Yeah, so with Bess I found I had to keep um keep her on a lead and then just keep the cows at bay. I remember walking through Cheddar once and I had a walking I haven't got a walking pole handy, but I remember once these cows, they were very, very, very inquisitive. And one walked right up to us. And I mean, arms length away. And I got my walking pole. And I just, and it was the first time I ever used my walking pole. I didn't actually do anything with it. But I literally just held the walking pole in front of me as a poker. And then just very gently, I didn't didn't hurt her, I didn't do anything, but I just very gently touched it on the nose with the um, the, the handle end of the of the pole. And I just just touched it on the nose like that. And it was just enough to stop it walking any closer because it was literally just on a beeline to, to, you know, to me, and I don't know whether it would have stopped. That's the closest, although I've had a couple of close calls out here too, but that was the closest one as, well, no, there was one that was, here was eating grass literally at the door of the Supermed a few months ago. That was pretty close too. But this one, like I said, it walked right up to me and I just got the pole, just just touched it on the on the i mean basically kind of walked into the pole really but it was it was it was literally a touch and it just stopped what it was doing and it kind of sort of thought well, what am i going to do now and then i sort of just gently backed away about three or four steps i didn't want to back away too much because i didn't want to give ground because i don't think you should be giving ground um you know that's my that's where I am, and I'm not moving. Um, but I did, it was so close, I really had no choice, because it couldn't, it was, it would have just brushed past, past me as it walked past other way. So I kind of just took a couple of steps back into the, 
probably to my I don't know actually I think it might have just gone straight backwards because if I'd have gone to the left I'd have tripped over Bess and she would have known what I was doing and if I'd have gone back into the right I'd have had to have pulled um, Bess and we are talking about Bess now and I, and I would have then had to have pulled Bess to the right with me which then would have put the cow and Bess literally eyeball to eyeball so I don't think I would have done I think I just would have just maybe taken half of a step back I don't think I even stepped back very much maybe a step or two and then I think the cow just turned around and just walked off and just left me in peace I've never I've never had a problem with cows like I said I've had some and like I said, I got, you know, I got a dog as well. Um, you know, I've, like I said, I've definitely had them close, but I've never been afraid or nervous of them. And if there's a load of cows right by a gate, I just walk up to the gate, nonchalantly go, shoo, shoo, move, come on, shift, come on. Talking a pretty, you know, authoritative, you know, lord of the man away. <laughs> and then they'll sort of move a bit and then you can kind of like get over the gate and if they're still there, you kind of come on, move out of the way. Tell them to shift. And they shift. You can get past them, that's fine. I've, I've, like I said, I've never, never yet had a, never yet had a problem with cows, <laughs> the, the four the four legged variety. <laughs> Tony behave. <laughs> anyway, I better put some. Uh, everyone's turned off by now. Anyway, I, I bet it's probably like you could probably I could probably name the people who have. I reckon Kenneth might have got to this. Kenneth, I reckon you might have put up with this. Chris, you've probably got this far. Um, Andy, you might have got this far. Um, sorry, there's a couple of other names that, es that escape me. I can't think. Um, there's a couple of others that have probably got, <laughs> got this far. So if I haven't named you, I do apologize. I'm terrible with remembering names if i've named you and you got this far post a message before and if you're a regular and i forgot your name put a comment below anyway i think i better put the put the porridge on and uh, i'll catch up with you all a bit later